So first of all, we have to focus on the evidence, we have to focus on data. In fact, I'm a bit on a mission here to suggest to organizations that we should use the same kind of scrutiny that we use in our finance departments and in our marketing departments also in our HR departments. As you're thinking about the data that you want to collect, you should think about representation. That means you should look at the fraction of women and men you hire compared to the available pool. Then you should repeat this exercise, looking at career advancement at each hierarchy level. How many men and women do we have? What does our promotion look like? Really take a very close look um, at how you compensate men and women, not just in terms of salary, but also in terms of bonus. You might also want to look at how you allocate work because what we often find is uh, something that we call performance support bias, where women aren't given the same kind of support as their male counterpart. Do not focus on fixing mindsets or fixing people, but instead fix your systems. And when I say systems, I think about formal procedures, how we recruit, how we hire, how we evaluate our job applicants, but I also mean things that are beyond kind of what we normally call kind of formal procedures. So think about your culture, about your meetings, about what we might uh, want to refer to these days as micro inequities or even microaggressions. Thirdly, we can get into the nitty gritty of what these different debiasing procedures mean. And maybe I'll just give you two examples. The first one is, if you think about uh, your job advertisements, we now know and we have the big data to in fact help us predict how likely employers are to attract women when they use words such as competitive or assertive or leader, which stereotypically are associated with men, as compared to words such as collaborative or cooperative or compassionate, which traditionally are associated with women. Do you bias the language that you use in your job advertisements? I think that's a very low-hanging fruit that really any organization can implement. Maybe a second idea for organizations um, is to think about their career advancement. That's really where much of the action is today, where we're losing a lot of female talent. Look at whether you in fact promote based on people's performance and whether you promote equally. And if not, which is in fact what we often find, we call this performance reward bias, where women don't get the same kind of reward given the performance appraisals they have received, then try to intervene. For example, you might want to think about informing your managers on their promotion track record by gender. Often just knowing what has happened helps solve the problem, suggesting that in fact much of this is happening unconsciously and unintentionally. And by giving people the tools to fix some of their own behaviors, we can really move the needle in the right direction.